eggs, probably the most diverse ingredient when it comes to the culinary arts. I mean, think about it. Can you name a food component besides an egg that can be baked, boiled, whisked, marinated, beaten, fried, battered, chopped, poached, scrambled, souffléed, whipped, pickled, meringued, steamed, eaten raw, emulsified, and one of my personal favorite ways to eat eggs, deviled. That's why for today's video, I will teach you how to make uh, three different types of deviled eggs, a classic version, a spicy version, and a smoky sweet version while using three different types of poultry. So it's going to be a really fun one. And we will also continue discussing the wonderful wide world of egg lore part two on this episode of Food Lore with Jenny. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So happy you are here to join me. My name is Jenny and I like to cook dishes related to myths, legends, old wife tales, and more, all related to food and ingredients with a few fun facts sprinkled in there as well. So if this is something that interests you, please subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment. Uh, it means so much to me. FYI, I will list the ingredient measurements if you only want to use chicken eggs for these recipes. I totally understand. Um, the other ingredient measurements will be there as well. And let's get started. So for our classic deviled eggs, we're going to need six quail eggs, one tablespoon of mayonnaise, a half a teaspoon of yellow mustard, three-fourths tablespoon of sweet pickled relish, one-fourth teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, and two pinches of celery salt. For our spicy deviled eggs, we're going to need six chicken eggs, one to two jalapenos, seeds and ribs removed, finely diced, one and one-half tablespoon of cream cheese, one tablespoon of mayonnaise, one teaspoon of spicy brown mustard, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, Old Bay seasoning poured onto a small dish, and your personal hot sauce of choice. For our sweet and spicy smoked deviled eggs, you're going to need six duck eggs, six pieces of bacon, one fourth cup of maple syrup, the real kind, one fourth cup of brown sugar, either light or dark, two and a half tablespoons of mayonnaise, one and a half teaspoons of Dijon mustard, one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, <coughs> one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, one and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika, a bottle of your favorite barbecue sauce, and salt and pepper. Set your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Place six pieces of bacon on a wire rack that's on top of an aluminum foil lined baking sheet. Make sure to spray the racks with cooking spray before putting the bacon on them. Very important for removal. Glaze the bacon with some maple syrup and sprinkle them with brown sugar. Put them in the oven and cook for 10 minutes. Remove them from the oven and then flip bacon to the other side using some tongs. Glaze this side with the syrup and brown sugar as well, and then place them back into the oven for another 10 minutes. If you prefer crispier bacon, you can add another minute to the timer, but I would not go too much longer because the sugar can and will burn. So to be safe, just check on it frequently, but I wouldn't go much higher than the 20 minute mark. So one thing I noticed when I was researching for this recipe is that everyone has their own try and true method of boiling eggs. Some people add baking soda, some people bring the water to a full boil, turn off the heat, put the eggs in, and then bring the water back to a boil. Another one that involved way too much math for my personal taste. Um, if you have a preferred method to boil eggs, absolutely use your method. In fact, feel free to share any below in the comment section. I'm just going to show you the one that has always worked for me. So first, pull the eggs out of the fridge to let them warm up slightly. Fill up a pot with water, or pots, if you're making all three versions, and add a splash of vinegar to each. Bring the water to a boil and cook the eggs for the time each type of poultry needs. For chicken eggs, that's 10 minutes uh, for a soft boil and 12 minutes for a hard boil. 
Uh, duck eggs are about 11 minutes for a soft boil and then 13 for a hard boil, whereas quail eggs are about four to five minutes. I prefer a soft boil because I don't like the chalky texture of a hard boiled yolk, but you can cook them the way that you want. After cooking, immediately remove the eggs from the heat and place them into bowls of ice water to stop the cooking. To peel the eggs, lightly crack on a counter and under some running water, peel the eggs. The running water helps separate the eggs from the membrane of the shell. Cut the, peeled, cut the peeled eggs in half, remove the yolks, and put them into separate bowls. Don't beat yourself up if the eggs aren't peeled perfectly. It won't be super noticeable once they are cut and laid on their sides. I especially had trouble with the duck eggs. It just takes some practice. Plus, it will still taste great, and you could always use these ones as taste testers and leave the prettier ones for guests. Take the eggs and cut them in half, remove the yolks and from the whites, and put them into a bowl. Some will be easier than others, like the little quail egg yolks came out pretty intact, and the chicken egg yolk practically fell out. The duck eggs were a bit more of a challenge. I ended up using my fingers to separate the yolk from the wall, which helped remove them more cleanly. Uh, I did break some of the duck egg whites, so don't judge yourself if you do too. So while we are cutting and removing yolks, let's get back to talking about egg lore. So in the first video, which I will link in the description, we discussed the cosmic egg and the beginning of seeing eggs used as religious symbols. However, it shifted from being just a symbol and was being included in the menu. Eggs are a huge part of Jewish customs, especially Passover, the Jewish holiday that commemorates the exodus when ancient Israelites broke free from slavery in Egypt. After traveling through the desert for 40 years, they became known as the nation of Israel. The Seder is the ritual feast that happens at the, be the very beginning of Passover, and eggs have traditionally been a significant component of the meal. During the late 1st century CE, the Second Temple in Jerusalem, also known as Herod's Temple, was destroyed. After this, eggs became a symbol of the continuity of life, being reborn in times of sorrow in Jewish culture. This is why it's common to see eggs offered at funerals or other occasions of mourning. However, they are not the only culture that relates eggs to mourning. Certain folk cultures that have been documented massively throughout all corners of early Europe connected eggs with grief and death. Some traditions claimed that supernatural beings could hide their souls in an egg. A person needed to find and crush the egg to destroy the spirit. Which was apparently a lot easier said than done because the eggs were hidden in some pretty wild places, like the inside of an animal for example. Other European folklore states eggs as not only magical ingredients, but an essential use in magic spells. Early Europeans would warn others not to leave discarded eggshells around their homes for fear of witches coming and taking them. Egg charms could be used anywhere from growing crops to boosting fertility. Some folklorists believe that the eggs were used as a substitute for a living sacrifice. One of those traditions included giving eggs to river spirits to allow safe boat travels. During the late 4th and 5th century CE, the Catholic Church began to adopt specific rules for meals that could be eaten during Lent. Lent is a Christian observance of when Jesus was in the desert without food for 40 days. Pope Gregory the Great the Bishop of Rome from September 590 CE until his death, started decreeing what foods were and were not acceptable during Lent. This included meat, cheese, butter, milk, and eggs. After Lent, a huge festival and feast is provided, allowing all these forbidden foods to be eaten again. This festival is what we know today as Easter. Eggs became a principal dish associated with the holiday, not only because it was allowed to be eaten again, but it also served as a visual symbol of Jesus' empty tomb and resurrection. Since then, eggs and Easter have been best buds, and multiple traditions and customs came from the pair. 
Easter celebration involving eggs include games like egg rolling, egg dancing, egg tossing, egg mystery plays, egg hunts, and perhaps most famously, egg decorating. When did the tradition of coloring eggs start? Well, most scholars believe it was probably in Persia, and then later spread into European Christianity. Early Easter celebrators would dye the eggs red to represent the blood of Christ, but that tradition goes back even further than that. Decorated and engraved ostrich eggs were found in Africa, which are believed to be over 60,000 years old. Eggs decorated in silver and gold were commonly found in grave sites of the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Sumerians. In Australia, emu eggs are carved and made into aboriginal art, known as culti party carvings. In the Middle Ages, documented cases of egg decorating were established, and the eggs were colored in the hues and patterns we uphold today. Other decorating traditions include the Slavic, Polish, and Hungarian tradition of painting eggs using a beeswax technique called paisanki. Spanish and Mexican traditions include cascarones, which are hollowed eggshells filled with confetti or small toys and colored with pieces of brightly colored paper. In Japan, washi paper is used to decorate eggs into beautiful ornaments. Another Hungarian tradition called egg shoeing is when blacksmiths would test their skills by attaching miniature horseshoes made of iron and lead to the eggs. During the vernal equinox, Iranians decorate eggs as part of Nowruz, the Iranian New Year. So as you can see, historically, colorful eggshells are not solely related to one specific culture. Speaking of eggshell colors, did you know that the feathers of a chicken's earlobes determine the color of an egg? Isn't that wild? I didn't even know chickens had earlobes. While not 100% accurate, most chickens with white ear feathers lay white eggs, chickens with brown feathers lay brown eggs, and chickens with bluish gray feathers, you guessed it, lay bluish gray eggs. The egg cell shape was initially believed to determine the gender of the chicken, but that is seen as a more of an old wives' tale now. Another old wives' tale includes the number of yolks in an egg. If you crack an egg with more than one yolk in it, traditionally it is good luck and could mean twins or triplets are in your future. But it most likely means your sunny side up eggs will be yolkier than usual. One of today's most widely known myths involves the spring equinox and balancing. The myth states that because the sun and the moon are on equal opposite sides of the earth, the gravitational pull is equalized, allowing a raw egg to stand vertically on its tip. While you can balance an egg on its tip on the spring equinox, you can also do it on any other day of the year. Try it for yourself. So we talked a lot about eggs relating to religion and other belief systems, but what about science? Any cool egg facts involving science? Well, there is one I think many people would be familiar with, and that is the age-old question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Quantum physicists have proposed the idea that both answers are correct. However, other scientists have argued a more concrete solution. The egg came first. It is believed that a chicken-like bird mated with another chicken-like bird a long, long, long time ago, and then the pair produced a chicken egg. A theory supported by everyone's favorite astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson. This is a question you can indeed ponder yourself as you finish eating your own quantinized and involved deviled eggs. Now let's get back to the recipe. When you have all the yolks separated from their eggs and in three individual bowls, you'll combine all the ingredients. For the quail eggs, add the mayo, yellow mustard, celery salt, sweet pickle relish, and apple cider vinegar and mix to a smooth consistency. For the chicken eggs, add the mayo, spicy brown mustard, paprika, cayenne, jalapenos, and cream cheese and mix as well. For the duck eggs, add the mayo, the Dijon mustard, smoked paprika, and Worcestershire sauce to the eggs. Take the bacon and chop it into small pieces and then add the desired amount into the egg yolk mixture. Make sure to save a few pieces for the end. Take some baggies and put your mixture into each of them, cutting off the tip to make a piping bag. 
Pipe each mixture into the egg whites. Then for the classic eggs, you can add paprika, some dill, or chives to the top. For the chicken eggs, you can then uh, pour some of your favorite hot sauce over the top of them. And for the duck eggs, you can... For the duck eggs, take your barbecue sauce and drizzle them over the top of the eggs. You can then add some of the bacon pieces to the top as well. Now, whether or not you make all three versions with different types of eggs or just one, it will still be a fun crowd pleaser. I will say that all three eggs do add their own unique taste to the dish. The duck eggs are creamier and richer than the chicken eggs, but the chicken eggs are slightly more decadent than the quail eggs. I would rate it all to the taste of different types of milk. The, ducks egg, the duck eggs are like whole fat milk, the chicken eggs are low fat, and then the quail eggs are skim. It's all milk, but some are richer and stronger in flavor. And absolutely delicious. And absolutely delicious. Thank you so much for joining me today. I so appreciate it. Please subscribe below. If you know of any lore stories I missed about eggs, write them in the comment section and I'll pin one of them to the top. Have a happy Friday and positive vibes and I will see you next time. Bye!